I'm here with Jerry uh, in Prineville, Oregon, and uh, we want to take a few minutes to just talk about this really cool space that we're in. So maybe tell us quickly, uh, for those of you that don't know you, um, just maybe introduce yourself and explain a little bit about where we are. Okay. So my name is Jerry Costa Dodson, and this piece of land is called Dancing Cat Farm. It's located in Crook County, Primeville, Oregon. We're the center of the state, so it's high desert here. I've been farming for about 17 years on this farm, raising heritage breeds in a, the most healthy way. And along the way, we uh, decided to put a yurt on um, the property. It's a 30-foot yurt made by Pacific Yurts, and it's as large as you can get. And when we brought it in, originally it was for private use, but since I have farm tours and educational programs and uh, workshops and all kinds of events here, um, it became a community it, more than a private space. And uh, also when we first put this up, we did not uh, have much time because an event was coming up, so we used a pond liner for the bottom. And um, it's been up for 12 years. The pond liner now, with so many people coming to all kinds of events, um, it now has valleys and you know the rocks are coming through. And so when we had a big snow recently, we had four inches of uh, mud and um, water in the yurt itself, so we couldn't have any events. <coughs> when we bought it, it we bought it in uh, parts. And so the roof is new and almost everything is new, but the sides are 22 years old. Uh, it, it had spent 10 years on the Oregon coast before coming here, and it is now weathered and tattered. The windows don't stick. The, um, the actual skin is thin. And we need to put the whole yurt up on a wood floor, which will make it easier for the elderly to walk in here and handicapped as well. When you originally put the yurt together, um, what was the goal? Like, what, what did you want to kind of uh, accomplish by putting this really awesome structure here? Well, like I said, originally it was private, but it, we quickly realized that the community was fascinated with a structure like that. This, there isn't one in the area, and all the different ways it could be used. So it became used for educational projects, art projects, and now, it, uh, most currently, amazing music projects which brought you to uh, Prineville from Berlin. <laughs> It, and we want to continue this. The community is saying that they would like this to continue. Um, we want to do it. The musicians that come here uh, get some rest and um, make a little money and have a good time and get to know our community of Prineville. And it's a good thing for everybody. I would like to continue to bring community together um, to learn and enjoy art of all kinds, music, uh, painting, uh, um, just uh, spoken word, everything um, that comes under uh, um, the flag of education and arts. I love it. And that's kind of what we want to do. I mean, in some sort, it will become some sort of a art um, cultural center right. that people can come and enjoy. It can also be used for some private events that uh, uh, that are not open to the public. It's just a space. It's a round space. People who come here are um, love it because it feels healing. There's a certain energy in here that people pick up on and take away with them when they leave. It's uh, really good. Good for the farm. Good for um, the community. Well, we had like last night, you know, with the concert here. We yeah. had we had a lot of fun having like you know it was just. I said this morning that it was like a recipe for success. Like you had really nice people in a really cool space with pretty good musicians. And, what like, amazing all that, musicians! <laughs> but all those things together, like it, it was just a recipe for like a really good night. And so like I I, I think 
in talking with a lot of people that, that were here living in the area, everyone was super appreciative of this place and of everything that you were doing because they were like, hey, you know, it's not very often that we get something like that in Prineville. And it's like, well, that's why you need to keep coming back to all the events <laughs> in Europe because they're gonna, you are going to have more right. stuff like this going on. And we just think it's very special and important for the community that you're doing this because you're bringing so many... You know, a, a lot of people around here, they, they don't, there aren't a lot of venues in different places that you can experience something like this. And, and the, the atmosphere in itself is truly unique. So Good. don't stop. And what, what we're hoping to do now is to, to get some people that maybe live in the, you know, in the region, if we can put this out, you're going to do a GoFundMe a campaign, GoFundMe, right? GoFundMe, right. Right. So some of those Very repairs, re, some of those repairs and those things that you want, you'll have a GoFundMe campaign. It's an easy way to donate directly. Uh, so that we can help uh, get the yurt up. So the next time that we come back, <laughs> we have a floor. We'll have a floor, <laughs> and and although I kind of like the valleys, but I see the I see the the problems that they, they could be slightly problematic. But but I think it'll be in everything that you were describing last night. I think it's going to be something truly special. Good. I hope so. Um, that is the plan. It does seem to have enough uh, support, but we'll see. I mean, I've never done a GoFundMe. I never imagined I'd be doing a GoFundMe, but uh, since it is a community space, I would love it if the community would help me keep it Yeah. for all of us. Yeah, I love so it. So we'll see. We'll see. Cool. Well, um, we have one other question that we'd like to ask. You know, we've got this, uh, uh, this theme called Lose Your Ties, and it's the name of our album, and it you know, I mean, you know a little bit about us that we travel around and that we all kind of had a little bit of uh, different backgrounds that we, in in our case, we sort of gave them up to, to go after what we're, you know, right. our dream and what we're chasing after. And, you know, in talking with you, you've had a pretty interesting life, actually. And I would, I would love to, in asking this question about lose your ties, like, do you have something... Um, that personal with you that you could share about that theme or at least that idea of kind of uh, yeah losing your ties what does that mean to you or if you just want to say something really profound that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> profound well I think uh, losing your ties says to me follow your dream follow your heart your soul your dream and if you do that you will be happy mm -hmm. it doesn't mean there won't be challenges it doesn't mean there'll be some days you have to uh, work at it, but you will be happy. And if you don't, you're always going to have a part of you that's missing. Mm. I don't know. I'm glad. I, I was an archaeologist for 20 years before I became a farmer here. I did not realize I was going to be a farmer. It's completely accidental. But uh, I'm really glad I did. The local saying is that I spent 20 years taking it out of the ground and now I spent 17 putting it back <laughs> and that's you know it I mean I loved archaeology but I love this also so cool. and now we're bringing in more arts and so you know I'm losing I don't have the big livestock right now that I used to have and now it's being filled with musicians and people and um, inspiration and magic basically brilliant cool so from the yurt from Prineville <laughs> with Jerry um, there's gonna be a GoFundMe campaign coming soon so take a look at that if you're in the region or if you just want to support something really cool for a really nice community uh, support the GoFundMe campaign and uh, until we see one one another again thank you very much for you're having welcome, us welcome Bennett thanks for coming it was it was over-the-top spectacular good